Okay, um, so it looks like uh, the number of people that, that are joining us is starting to tail off. So um, why don't we get started? Um, I just wanted to let you know that the um, Met Plus version 4.1.0 uh, official coordinated release is available. Uh, you should be getting an announcement about it um, via email. Like Jenny, who is uh, one of our um, most excellent men, is helping with uh, these training series and, and so forth. Um, we'll be uh, working on getting that done um, probably while, while the session is um, going on. Anyway, and then I also wanted to point out um, that we want, uh, that you may want to save um, June 27th through the 29th, um, especially in the, mor uh, in the morning U.S. time, um, you know, uh, afternoon um, Europe and, um, you know, just past um, GMT time uh, for the first MetPlus users workshop. So we're going to do it virtually um, and, uh, you know, it's, it, not only have um, you know people presenting how they're using that plus um, as well as you know some um, uh, planning and strategizing for where we want that plus to go in the future um, and so forth so um, save those dates and with that um, there's a, a quick one wants to ask about the release and or the workshop I'm going to stop sharing and let um, Dan bring up his um, presentation um, Dan's going to be talking about a new tool um, that is in, that is part of the, the release, the Gen Ons Prod tool. Um, and we do not have um, an online tutorial session set up for that yet because it's got a release, but he's going to um, demonstrate um, the capability. So I'm going to stop presenting now. Any questions while Dan is bringing up his um, presentation? Okay, Dan, take it away. Hey, thanks, Tara. Um, so as Tara mentioned, I'll be talking about a new tool um, that was added in the MetPlus coordinated release uh, 4.1.0. And if you're just using Met uh, as, a, as a standalone package, it's going to be available in 10.1 um, and above only. So you'll see this annoying yellow disclaimer um, on all my slides, and that's just to remind folks that the version of MetPlus that is included for hands-on use during this tutorial does not include this capability. So anything you're seeing here, uh, don't be confused if you can't find where it is or, or um, can't get it to work or anything like that because uh, it, it won't. Um, so just a reminder um, about that. Um, I'll, uh, I have some slides that will go over the tool and then we'll um, do a hands-on demonstration of a use case or, or really just a live demo. It's not really a hands-on. It's more just uh, me sharing my screen as we run the use case uh, and folks can, can follow along. Um, and I'll ask anyone from the MET team and MET Plus team to, to chime in um, during this presentation um, because this is a new tool, just to make sure I'm conveying the uh, capability uh, correctly. So with that, let's get started. Um, so this is the uh, tried and true or famous uh, MET wiring diagram um, for the MET software, which highlights all of the various tools, pre-processing capabilities, and, and other utilities that exist within the MET software package. And for 10.1.0, um, anyone who's intimately familiar with this diagram will notice that the ensemble stat bubble um, has changed color uh, to be this blue shading. Um, it used to have a dual uh, shading before a green and a blue. And essentially what the Gen Ons Prod tool is doing is taking that green portion, which is a pre-processing or, or derivative field uh, calculator a component out of the ensemble stat tool into a standalone piece of software um, called Gen Ons Prod, which now exists up here um, with other pre processing tools. And the Gen Ons Prod will take uh, gridded forecast and gridded analysis data as input, and it produces a uh, net CDF uh, gridded output file. So what is Gen Ons Prod? Gen Ons Prod simply stands for Generate Ensemble Products, and it's uh, uh, useful for um, ensemble forecasts, 
um, of various uh, types, uh, um, including uh, physics ensembles or time lag ensembles, anything where you have multiple members um, uh, creating forecasts. And so the functionality is to generate simple ensemble products um, from the gridded forecast or analysis data. And it also includes options for normalization and neighborhood methods as well. The important thing to understand and, and how this is different from ensemble stat is there is no statistical functionality anymore. That lives inside ensemble stat and other MEC statistical tools um, from the wiring diagram, the blue shading here, or the statistical tools. Um, and so this is simply just to create derived products from your ensemble forecast output. As I mentioned earlier, it reads various gridded data formats. Um, NetCDF and GRIB uh, come to mind, um, and it writes a gridded NetCDF output that can be used as input um, to Ensemble Stat, or you can also feed it to other MET tools um, if you have a novel workflow um, for your case. Um, again, I uh, just want to reiterate this it replaces and extends the functionality that was found in Ensemble Stat in previous MET versions. And um, these functionalities within Ensemble Stat to create these products are going to be deprecated uh, moving forward. So we encourage all users to switch their workflows um, from creating these products within Ensemble Stat to using Genon's prod. And if I haven't said it enough already, this is only available in MET Plus 4.1.0 and above. Um, so you won't find anything in the tutorial version um, you have available to yourself. Um, so we're just going to go through the usage and then some configuration of the tool and then look at an example command uh, of how we run it and then uh, uh, wrap up and, and we can do some screen sharing and, and try and run the use case. Um, it's fairly straightforward. Um, it takes uh, three required arguments, which is dash ons, which is your um, list of ensemble members or a list of file, uh, a file list of ensemble members. The out argument is your NetCDF output file name, and the config argument is the config file. There are other options here where you can specify a, a control member file that won't be used for um, uh, product generation, um, and also a log file um, and control the verbosity level to get more information about what the tool is doing. So, Let's look a little bit about uh, different config options within the tool. Um, I've broken this down essentially into um, two situations. The first here is where you have ensemble output and each member output is in its own file. Um, and then on the next slide, we'll talk about what the case where um, you have all members within a single file. Um, there are three options here that I'm demonstrating, but there are more um, options uh, that are common to all of the MET tools, and I've linked that down here in the MET user's guide. Um, so you may want to review that um, if, if you're interested in additional configuration options. Um, so here there's an ons thresh and a valid thresh, um, which are ratios of the total valid ensemble fields to the total ensemble members and the total uh, valid ensemble data to the total ensemble members. And these can be used to control um, whether or not you process and to make sure you have all the data that you need or that you're expecting from your ensemble to create the products. Um, the field entry here, um, you can have uh, field attributes for ensemble members here. Uh, this is accumulated precipitation for a three hour um, a total accumulation. And there's three different thresholds, or excuse me, two different thresholds that are being um, requested. Uh, basically, any accumulated precipitation greater than zero and above a five. Um, I think here it's millimeters. So um, if that's if you can specify, sorry, I should go back. Um, you can specify this, and this will imply, uh, apply to all of the files that you provide in the dash bonds or the file list of ensemble members that you pass in. So it will look in each one of those files for the AAPCP field, um, the level that you're requesting, and um, apply the thresholds that you have here. If you have all of your members in a single file, you can use the configuration option called ONS member IDs. And this is a list of string identifiers that are substituted into the field entry for you automatically by GenOns prod. And this is where you can specify the IDs of the members that you want to include in the derived product generation from your ensemble. Um, 
There's also uh, the option to prov uh, provide a control ID in this manner um, if your control member is included also in the single file. Um, one tip here um, that I, I found useful in testing the tool um, is to use the ensemble flag option um, within the field entry. And it's not shown on the screen here, but if you set ensemble flag equal to true, you'll get all of the derived products that Genon's prod can compute for that field um, in your output file. And we'll talk about this a little bit more um, in the coming slides. The uh, code snippet here that I've shown on the screen where it says name level and grib ons is for um, grid format. Um, I've linked to the MET documentation um, at the bottom which shows uh, net CDF syntax if you happen to be using net CDF files because it is uh, different. Um, so be aware of that. Another um, uh, good capability of the Genons prod tool is the ability to do normalization. And um, one of the cool things about this is you can apply this uh, per field. Um, so John can correct me if I'm wrong or, or someone else, but I believe you can choose different options for different fields even. Um, is that right? Yes, Dan, that's correct. Um, you can define this, yeah, so not this only separately within each field array entry. Yeah, so you can, you can um, do some things like standardize anomalies for some fields. You can normalize relative to your ensemble um, mean um, for another field. And um, it, it, the, the options are, are really, um, really plentiful here. Um, and I'm not going to go through each one of these. Um, but essentially, you can choose to either have a climatology uh, from some external uh, file, uh, like a reanalysis data set or uh, an official climatology record or something like that. Or you can use your ensemble forecast um, to uh, compute anomalies um, from, and there's various flavors of that here, and there's standardization that can be done. And again, you can, you can really drill down and, and specify this uh, per field and change the behavior of each field in your output. So pretty powerful uh, capabilities here as well. So one of the outputs um, that Genon's prod can compute, um, if you're familiar with ensemble stat, this should look uh, very familiar um, uh, to the, again, the capability that existed with ensemble stat. I can't remember off the top of my head whether there's a few new things here that weren't in ensemble stat or not. Um, I'm not really sure. Um, but I've highlighted a couple here in the right side of the slide. Um, the left slide, the gray, the gray box is every option. Um, I didn't, I only included ones that, that weren't obvious. So things like mean, standard deviation, uh, mean and max, uh, and range, I felt like were fairly self-explanatory. So didn't need to include a description. Um, but if you're curious, um, I provided some additional context of the other options here, uh, including the neighborhood methods, the uh, NEP and, and MEP, neighborhood ensemble probability and neighborhood maximum ensemble probability. Uh, and I've included a reference for that information if you're interested in the methodology uh, and, and advantages to those uh, methods um, at the bottom. So a sample command, um, this is a pretty straightforward command from uh, the MET user's guide that I'm, I'm showing here. Um, you call Genon's prod and then again, three required options, dash ons, dash out, and dash config. Here we're um, providing a uh, using a, a wildcard on the command line to generate a list of files um, to pass in. And the wildcard is in the center of the, the red box there with the asterisks, the GEP string. Um, I've shown what the asterisks would return um, in the red box in the lower left. And here we have um, six uh, different WARF ARW uh, members. And so there will be uh, six. Um, uh, ensemble members and I, I can't remember the configuration I'd have to look but one of them may be the control in this particular situation I can't remember um, how the configuration file is set up um, but the out file is included there is the net cdf file and then the config file um, as well and I've provided an output of the uh, head, field header um, the, excuse me the headers from the net cdf file that come out of this particular call and you can see here I've highlighted for APCP in this particular case that ensemble flag uh, 
option was set to true. And so we get all um, of the derived products that uh, Genon's prod can compute. Um, but if you, if you go below there, there's a reflectivity, a U wind, a V wind, um, and a uh, vertical wind, I guess. Uh, I'm not sure what wind is, but um, those uh, only have certain derived products turned on. So you don't get um, every single one, um, only a subset of the output that it can compute. So quick summary before we uh, live demo the tool. Um, again, it's a standalone tool for generating derivative or summary product from ensemble forecast. Uh, replaces previous functionality that used to exist um, within ensemble stat. Again, we encourage users to uh, migrate their workflows to uh, Genom's prod for those uh, computations. Um, really, the 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 uh, you know advent of Genom's prod streamlines the Met ensemble uh, product portfolio by keeping the scope of individual tools limited. So that that means ensemble stat is really just going to be for statistical uh, computations and not to create these derived products, and 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 it will allow a lot of flexibility and and you know make room for additional development going forward um, in, in a standalone tool. And once again, uh, if I haven't said it enough already, uh, it's only available uh, in MET Plus uh, version 4.10 and above or MET uh, 10.10 and above. So I'll take any questions um, with maybe some help from the group before we move on to the live demo. If there is any, let me go to the chat quick. I haven't heard any dings, but uh, let's see. Great. Okay. I don't see anything in the chat. So I'm going to stop hey. sharing. And the, oh, yep. Does somebody have a question? Oh, no. It's me. Um, I, I was going to suggest you stop sharing and, and um, it, you know, bring up your screen again if you were going to um, demonstrate anything. Yeah. Yep. Anything in the terminal. Mm -hmm. All right, so the, oh, hold on one second. Have to bear with me, apologize. Apparently my connection got severed with the server. There we go. Okay, so here we are uh, on the command line, and we are using um, MetPlus 4.1.0, um, and we are going to run the uh, MetPlus GenOnsProd Met Tool Wrapper use case. Um, if somebody, you know what, I'll just send this link in the chat, so if folks wanna follow along, um, with the web documentation of the use case uh, that I'm going to be demonstrating, you can view it um, in your browser. Uh, it's not part of the tutorial, but you still should be able to see the documentation um, as we go through this. So um, I have set up uh, three examples that we'll do. Um, one is the default uh, settings for the use case. Um, one is an adjustment of neighborhood methods to view the effect that the NEP uh, derivative product has on one of our fields. And the third one is an adjustment in the uh, output products uh, that are computed by Genon's prod so we can see the difference in the, uh, the fields that are produced in the output. Um, I have a system um, configuration file here that just points to my MET and where my input data are. And then the demo one default comp is just the use case configuration file that comes with MetPlus. So we'll go into MetPlus and we'll run MetPlus and we'll provide um, my system comp and then the default 
conf and we'll run that. Okay, Met Plus has successfully finished running. So we will look at the output from demo one default. And you see here we have a log directory and a genons prod directory where the genons prod output is. There's our net CDF file. Um, in this particular case, um, I believe we're still using those Wharf ARW ensemble members that um, I showed in the um, uh, slides a few minutes ago. Um, so we can just open this up in NC view and just take a quick look, although you may not be able to see this. Let me reshare. Apologize. Okay, um, this is probably pretty small, but you can see here the list of variables. Again, we get, um, this is a little bit different than the demonstration I showed in the slides, but we get all uh, output from a PCP, um, but we only get a subset for reflectivity, U win, V win. So we'll just look at uh, like a max uh, reflectivity from our ensemble and I'll just make that hair bigger. Again, this is, I believe this is perhaps the west coast of the US. I, I forget um, where this is located, but you can see uh, there's the max of reflectivity. And we'll take the min, switch to the min. There we go. And look at a range. So, yeah, nothing, uh, nothing too complicated here but just demonstrating the uh, capability. And now what we're going to do is we'll look at our demo two comp file, which is adjustments to the neighborhood ensemble probability uh, settings for MET plus. So if we scroll down to this section here, there's three items um, related to the neighborhood uh, probability um, that we're going to look at. And this is the one that I changed. I changed this from 5 to 15. And I believe the default was 5. So in the previous um, example for the accumulated precipitation, when it's creating NEP, um, it was using 5. But in this case, we'll use 15. So we'll go ahead and run this. And we'll pull up both uh, next to each other and take a look. So we'll run MET plus, pass in our system comp, and then pass in our demo two comp with the NEP. And we'll run that. Okay. And we'll go here. We'll go to demo one and look at uh, pull up the default output. So we can view the NEP at five, and then we'll look at the NEP using a width of 15. So let's see. here we go. Here's a APCP with 15 and an APCP. Which one did I pick? Greater than 10? Right. So you can see the effect that the um, just changing that one MET plus setting had on the resulting accumulated precipitation field. It's, it's highly smoothed on the right where we, uh, in this particular case, it looks like the grid spacing is five kilometers because in the field name menu, the neighborhood has a 25 after it when it's set to 5 and it has a 225 after it when it's set to 15 so 15 times 5 is 225 so you can see that um you know when when we degraded it significantly um at 15 it, it's highly smooth um, compared to 5. so we'll do one more um, we'll just adjust our uh, output fields that we're requesting and we'll look at the comp file for that real quick So in this particular comp file, um, what I have done 
is for reflectivity, um, I wanted to demonstrate the, you know, this sort of like ma magic that happens if you use this uh, global ensemble flag uh, option for a particular field. And this looks a little bit different because this is MET plus uh, configuration and not the actual Genons prog MET config file. But um, you see here for APCP, we have uh, var one options for APCP with ensemble flag to true. So we get all of the derived products um, that Genons prog computes. Um, it's, uh, MET plus is using a default uh, MET Genons prog file with, um, a various number of these output products, uh, where are they uh, here, turned on um, in it. And so by default, we get you know, whatever that has turned on for all of these additional fields. But to just demonstrate how this works in MET Plus, for reflectivity, I set the ensemble flag to false. And when we run this, there should be no reflectivity products in the output file. And so we'll just go ahead and run that real quick. run that plus, pass in our system comp, and sorry, this, okay. And our third demo, which is reduction in products, we'll run that. Successfully finished running. And we'll go to output and we'll NC dump the header from our default comp, uh, And we'll do that to default. And we'll NC dump the header from the last one where we reduce the output. And we'll compare the fields. And we should see that the reflectivity fields are gone. And cat default. And cat REPL. And we'll scroll up and for the default, I see we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight reflectivity products, mean standard deviation, uh, plus and minus one standard deviation in max range and frequency. And in the new one, they are gone. So um, I'll just point out one other thing about this, uh, the MET plus configuration and the control of products. So I demonstrated wholesale turning them off. Um, but if you wanted to adjust them, MET Plus provides uh, that control um, from the wrappers uh, via individual product uh, flags that you can turn on and off. Again, there's a default MET config file uh, that you'll get whatever that is set to, but you can, you can turn some of those off um, or turn other ones on that are not being used. So um, with that, uh, I don't think I have any other things to show, so I will stop sharing and take any questions. Or, you know what, I'll just hang on for a second in case someone wants to see something uh, or has a question. And if not, um, I'll hand it back to Tara. So any, any questions? All right, well, thank you. Um, again, uh, I'm sure as John would say, uh, feel free to reach out via GitHub discussions if you have any uh, you know, feedback or requests about the tool and uh, we'd be happy to uh, entertain that type of dialogue um, over there. So thanks very much. Thanks, Dan. Um, good morning all. I, this is John Hilligatway presenting some information about Ensemble Stat. I am wondering, are you seeing my um, the the presentation, or are you seeing my uh, notes page? Your notes. All right, let me try swapping them. How about now, George? Um, it has not updated for me yet. Yeah, it looks the same. I I don't see notes, John. I just see PowerPoint. Like it's just like you're gonna work on your slides or something. Oh, okay. Well, let me try one more time. It's, it's you, changed. Uh, so, yeah. so, Go ahead, George. Oh, sorry. Um, it flashed to black, and now it looks like it's still your notes. But maybe if you're in presentation mode, you can 
swap the view now? I'm I'm actually not in presentation not. mode. Dan, how did you what did you what order of buttons did you click on? Well, I use Google Slides, so I'm not sure. Ah. I mean, I was in a web browser. Uh, but I would click that little, you know, you click the little uh, the button down there by the Zoom slider on the bottom to the right. That didn't do it. So use presenter view. Did you it's... share your screen or a window? I shared a window. Yeah, you you might need to share a screen or switch right. or go to pre, go to present mode. But I don't know. I don't know how it I works. Will try that. Sorry, all bear with me. Try the entire screen. And there, I see. Yep, better. Looking good. Okay. So, um, I am going to talk about ensemble stat. I realize it's really unrealistic in 15 minutes to to get through all of ensemble verification in Met and in, in the Met Plus uh, suite. But I'm I'm mostly going to hit some highlights. Um, if there's there's plenty of documentation in the Met Users Guide that that dives into a lot more detail that I'll be able to cover in the next 15 minutes. But here we are in the wire diagram ensemble stat, as Dan pointed out, which once was blue green is now just blue because all we're doing is computing statistics in it. And this is as of uh, Met version 10.1 that was released yesterday. So um, what does ensemble stat do? It reads gridded ensemble member data. And it also reads gridded analyses and or point observations. So whereas point stat only processes point observations and grid stat only processes gridded anal analyses, ensemble stat processes both of them. It derives, so, so I'm noting here that as of 10.1, it does still currently derive uh, ensemble products, um, but that again is moved to Genon's prod for this version and will be fully removed from ensemble stat in 11.0. We chose to do it in that order because we didn't want to remove functionality in a minor release. Um, after it reads that data, it also computes verification statistics like continuous ensemble statistics like CRPS, um, rank probability score, spread skill variance. It also produces a few, it computes a few different types of histograms, uh, rank histograms, probability, probability integral transform or PIT histograms, and also relative performance histograms. Um, and then uh, brand new, um, as of a few weeks ago, Ensemble Stat also produces ensemble frequencies, um, which we often just refer to as probabilities on the fly and verifies them as such. So that's a, a brand new addition in this version of Ensemble Stat. And then it writes stat file output and optional ASCII files for each individual line type just like point stat and grid stat do. It also, if you're verifying against a gridded uh, field of, uh, of observation data, then it writes out um, the gridded field of ranks to a net CDF file. So this is the usage statement. Um, the first few lines are awfully familiar, awfully similar to what Genon's prod, um, what Dan just presented with Genon's prod. Um, the only difference is, and, and I wish if we could go back in time and redo things, I wish we had made all of our command line arguments start with a uh, be basically named options with a dash config. So in Genon's in Genon's prod, we have dash config as the way of specifying the configuration file. In Ensemble Stat, it's just a positional argument. So you list all of your input ensemble members, and then the next thing you list is the configuration file. So those are the required inputs. Um, the grid obs and point obs options um, are shown in green here and in the square brackets mean they're optional um, so if you want to compute if you want to verify against gridded or point observations and you specify them as such on the command line um, generally um, most users just compute an ensemble mean from the data passed to the tool um, and that's the default behavior if you have an ensemble mean computed in some other way in some in some more intelligent way than just a um, just a straight average, you know, if you're doing bias correction or something, then um, you can specify that input ensemble mean on the command line um, using the, that the dash ons mean option. If you have chosen to use uh, to specify a, a control member, you would specify that, and that lives in a separate file. You would specify that on the command line using the dash ctrl command line option, and this is new for version 10.1. 
Um, uh, and the, really, for the control member, uh, it is included in the computation of the mean in the tool, but it is excluded from the spread. And in general, the feedback we've heard is that um, while folks at the Met office um, often do specify a control member, um, folks that know EMC, we, we, that's less commonly done there. So I don't know much about the uh, considerations behind that, but just uh, it, it, it's an option that's available now if you'd like to use it. Just like in points that you could explicitly specify on the command line or a, a point observation retention time window, you can also do so in ensemble stat. Um, that these options are pretty lightly used. In general, you would instead specify the um, the matching time window in your configuration file, and then dash out dir directs the output to the re uh, the requested directory, and dash log and dash v are options that appear across all of the Met tools. So. Um, this is normally when I would talk about how you would configure the dash ENS or the, the ENS or the ensemble dictionary in the configuration file to generate products. I'm not going to talk about it here because it's moved to the other tool and uh, won't go into detail about it. Um, now, I could probably talk for uh, a couple hours about each one of these or about all of these configuration options that are available um, in the ensemble stat config file. Um, but I, you know, I'll, I'll just I'll mention a few highlights. In general, the forecasts and obs fields listed shown on the bottom left box are are really the very important ones. They define the data over which for which you want to compute uh, ensemble verification statistics. And in this example, I've listed two fields. The first one is accumulated precept APCP uh, at A24, so that's accumulation interval of 24 hours. So 24 hour accumulated precept. And the second one I've listed is temperature for two pressure levels, P500 and P850. And notice that for the APCP one, I defined a message type of ADP SFC. And for the temperature one, I defined a message type of ADP UPA. So um, the, the, those, those strings are, are prep buffer mnemonics that, that basically mean surface OBS, surface land OBS, and, and upper air OBS, like sound beats. So I wanted to point out that you can specify things like this separately for each field that you're verifying. So um, on the right side, you'll see that there's here we say may be set separately in each obs.field entry. So all of these options that we have here um, enable us to filter the, the point observation or the, the observation data that's used in the verification task. So you could, if there's specific station IDs you want to include or exclude, you can list them there. Um, if there's quality markers that you want to include or exclude, you can list them there. If in some of them you want to take the nearest, the OBS whose, whose timestamp is nearest to the verification time, and in other ones you want to compute the mean over the, over the time window of all the OBS following the time window, you can specify that with OBS summary. So all of these options can be specified within each field array entry. And um, I'm showing you how this is resolved, how this is used in the MET configuration file, um, how you would set it up in the MET plus configuration file um, will look different. But basically, th this is kind of all these all these options are documented and detailed in the user's guide. So generally, big picture, you are specifying the data that you want to verify, and then you're specifying the um, filtering criteria for which observations you want to use. And you're defining thresholds that you're going to apply to the data, and then also more configuration options about um, how you, you know, how the how the verification logic is configured in these ensemble bin sizes at the bottom. So what are the outputs? Um, all of the let's see, the first ones up to PCT. These are all previously existing outputs. So ECNT is the ensemble continuous statistics rank probability score rank histogram the prob probability integral transform histogram, um, individual observation rank data, which is basically like match pairs for, um, for each op point OBS value. We write out the point OBS value in all um, ensemble member values corresponding to that point. Um, the spread skill variance line type, and then the relative position um, histogram. So, and, and I have some pictures on that um, in future slides. So what's new here are these probabilistic statistics. So um, in general, in across in MET, um, the PCT line line type uh, stands for the n by two probabilistic contingency table. So um, 
Met takes the forecast probability values between zero and one and compares it to the observations, applying thresholds to define whether or not the observation, whether or not the forecast actually verified or not the event occurred. Um, and once we populate this, prop, this contingency table, all the statistic, all the other statistic line types like the PSTD, PJC, and PRC line types, as well as the ECLV for economic cost loss value line type, all of these stats are derived from this n by two contingency table. Um, and there's configuration options I think we'll see in a future slide about how you how you set those up. So running ensemble stat looks a lot like um, Dan's example of running Genon's prod. We had the same, in fact, oh, let me go back. In fact, we're using the same um, input data in this example. What's different here is that for ensemble stat, stat we're using the grid obs and point obs, command line arguments to pass in observation data. OK, so when you run it, the log, logging message you'll see printed to the screen will look something like this. It'll say, I'm reading the ensemble data. I'm processing. Well, you know, as of 11.0, you won't see processing ensemble field anymore because that'll be removed. But then processing gridded verification and so on, and writing these output files. So what is it? What are these stats that we are that Ensemble Stat is computing? And I'm, again, I'm not going to go over all of them. I want to I want to call your attention to the observation rank, though. So for each observation point, we look at the you know we interpolate the gridded Ensemble member data to that observation location. So if you have an ensemble of size n, um, you count up the number of those ensemble values that are less than the observation. And you add one to it, and that's the observation rank. So basically, for each observation value, we see uh, we we sort the ensemble uh, values corresponding to that observation, and we figure out where the observation exit falls relative to those ensemble member values. And we do that over you know the hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands of points that we have, and we keep track of a histogram of how frequently did the obs fall, you know. The, the location of where the obs fall relative to the ensemble members. And that's written out in the rank histogram or R hist line type. Similar but different is the relative position, where for each member, we don't sort the members. Instead, we look at the difference between um, each ensemble member value and the observation, and we figure out how often was that member closest to the observation value. So you can see, for example, um, this one with the highest bar, this member was more often closest to the observation than uh, the other members. And this, if you have a random construction of an ensemble, this obviously wouldn't make sense. This only makes sense where the, the position of the ensemble member being provided remains fixed from run to run. There's also the prob probability integral transform, where you take the observation rank, and from, which is an integer from 1 to n plus 1, and you transform it to the range of zero to one. The nice thing about using the the, the p hist line type and those those the, that's written out to the p hist line type is that it enables you to compare ensembles of different sizes. So um, as long as you put them into the, the ranks into a common range, then you can you they're they're more comparable. So more with rank histograms. Um, you know, ideally in an ideally constructed ensemble, um, the uh, observation would be uh, equally likely to fall anywhere relative to the ensemble, uh, the ensemble members. Um, it's, but more often, it's the case that either the rank histogram is that, or the ensemble is too wide or too narrow. Meaning that, in this case, where it's too wide, the observation is more likely to fall um, in the center of the of the distribution of the ensemble member values. Or if it's too narrow, the observation is more likely to fall uh, off the, you know, the either be less than all the ensemble members or, or greater than all the ensemble members. So people have been looking at uh, rank histograms for a long time for uh, evaluating the, the quality of an ensemble. And um, this is available in the output of ensemble stat. Um, another thing, another uh, recent addition I want to highlight is the addition of HIRA for ensemble stat. And we did this work with uh, Marion Mittermeier uh, in the Met office. and the high resolution assessment or HIRA is used in point stat in two ways. So uh, note here, I'm talking about point stat, where we have um, 
you take an observation and you look at the nearby points and you interpret those nearby points in the neighborhood um, as being a spatial ensemble, essentially. So, um, so and and so point stack can write out ensemble output um, as you know using the the points surrounding the the observation location. We can also compute a neighborhood event frequency and evaluate it as a probability forecast. So that's probabilistic output being written out from point stack. Um, and that's controlled in point set by the higher dictionary. The implementation ensemble stat is a little bit different. In ensemble stat, we it, we support it as an interpolation method. So in the, con the in the ensemble stat configuration file, the user can define um, you know how they take gridded um, forecast data and interpolate it to the location of the um, of the observation. And in this example, I have, I'm showing the first option is the nearest neighbor. So what that would look like is if we have an observation that occurs at this point, the nearest neighbor, we would just use the forecast value from that location. If we select HIRA with a width of two, that means a two by two box. So we would use the, the these four grid points, um, basically the, the in the grid, all, all four points of the grid box in which the observation resides. If we were to expand it to a five by five HIRA, then we'd be using 25 points. So realize what we're doing here though, is we're, we're greatly inflating the size of the ensemble. So with nearest neighbor, let's say you have a, if you have a 31 member ensemble, you would have a, you know, you would have a rank histogram with 32 ranks in it. If you did this with Hira with a width of two, it would be N 31 or 32 times four ranks. And if you did it with five by five, it would be 32 times 25, which is, getting quite large because realize that we're doing this across all the ensemble members. So a 31 member ensemble, for example, higher five by five, 775 rank, um, uh, plus one ranks, which yields a very long rank histogram line. So just something to be aware of. I think when using higher, I would encourage people to try looking at the pit histogram. It, it might be more, um, it, it might make it easier to compare results. Um, I'm not going to go into many details here. We could have another hour, spend another hour talking about ver verifying probabilities in MET. Just pointing out here that I mentioned earlier, the um, we, we construct this n by two probabilistic consistency table in ensemble stat configuration file. In the forecast dictionary, define the prob cat thresh for the probability category threshold. So if we're, we want to evaluate pop or probability of precip, we might set the probability category threshold to being greater than zero. And then prob PCT thresh, um, I'm saying double equal to 0 0.25, which is a shortcut we have in the configuration file for defining uh, probability bins of equal width. So 0 to 0.25 to 0.5 to 0.75 to 1.0. So this gives us one, two, three, four bins. And so this, this configuration would give us an n by two probabilistic contingency table, and we would, um, we would derive all the statistics from that table. Other, uh, some, some of those statistics that are derivable, the PRC line types contain, contains the points that are used to construct, um, construct a rock curve. The ECLV line type um, contains the economic cost loss value information which um, can be plotted like this. And that's all I have. So um, not comprehensive by any means, but a highlight of some of the functionality within Ensemble Stat. And I'm gonna hand it off to John Opatz now, um, and he's gonna go through an example, some examples of running um, Ensemble Stat via Met Plus. Yes, thank you, John. Appreciate that. Um, for the example I'm going to show, um, as you've seen both from Dan's presentation and from Johnny G's presentation, we've been covering a lot of stuff that's in the new versions, the 4.1 and upcoming, um, as we're losing functionality in Ensemble Stat and replacing it in Gen and Prod. Uh, the example I'm going to show you is going to kind of stick with uh, the old release. Uh, so the 4.0 and 10.0 versions. So you can run it with whatever's on your system right now. The new functionality in terms of uh, probabilities of the fly um, is not available, um, as Chinese she mentioned. So I won't be diving into that on this example, um, just to let you know. But if you do get it upgraded on your system, that'll be an option that you can uh, pursue. Let me get set up here for a window. All right. 
There we go. Okay, so you guys should be able to see a whole lot of um, entries on a system there saying that they are on the workbench. So uh, the use case I'm going to go over is something that's already in um, the MetPlus repository. Uh, let's take a look at the configuration file first. It's also currently set up, um, uh, this use case is set up in our online tutorial as well. So if you want to follow along there, um, by all means, you're welcome to. Uh, what I want to draw your attention to here is just at the top, at the process list, we're going to be going through a PB to NC call as well as followed by an ensemble stat. And because this is looped by um, times, we're going to be going through um, the various times starting with our begin and end and we're gonna because these are the same uh, it should be running once except we have lead sequences down here of zero one and two um, because we're doing that that means that you're gonna have at least um, three different times that you're going through and if you walk it out for in it uh, in it begin in it end, you'll be looking at um, valid times of 2018 July 9th at 12Z, at 13Z, and at 14Z. Again, that's going off the lead sequence of zero hours. Um, so that's the valid time, a one hour lead and a two hour lead. Um, uh, the other thing I want to draw your attention to is should be down here. There we are. Um, you can see that the the initialization times are used in the input template um, to grab uh, from the correct directories or the data assimilation and initialization times are um, set up so that you can um, you can get the times out. And then if you go down a little bit further, um, we can see that the forecast ensemble stat input template is using the lead um, down here to grab files. So if you looked in that list, we're going to be going to PBNC first, and Ensemble Stat will be reading in those files to help process things. So that's where that lead is going to be important. Um, if we run the use case, um, it's a pretty simple command here. Uh, the, the thing to note is that while we are using a PB to NC and an ensemble stat, we're running this for three times, so each tool will need to run three times. We're also requesting multiple variables, um, quite a few actually. Um, so this can take quite a while if you're running it for the first time. I think, um, especially if you have a, a small amount of memory available, I'm probably gonna just kill this just for the interest of time so that we don't get too late. Um, and so that we can discuss the results, but you're more than welcome to run this. It does run correctly. Um, let's go there. Come on. Uh, nope. I can kill it. Nope, that's not going to work. All right. Um, let's go back here. Always the joys of running live. Stop presenting. I'll get a new window set up for this. Sorry about that. Okay. Spawns over here. And it looks like, um, George did just drop a link to the uh, session guide. Thanks for that. Uh, if you guys want to look through that, by all means. Uh, let's go here, here, there we go. And then we're going to source our MET plus. There we are. OK. So I'm going to quickly go on. So we ran the use case. Ideally, it would tell you that um, the use case has finished running. So I'm going to try to jump over here and list out the output. So from the output, we can see that there's actually two directories that are available, an ensemble stat and a wrap. So taking a look at the um, the wrap directory first, and the reason why this was is because the PB to NC output directory put things in that, um, that wrap directory or the wrap folder and ensemble stat output directory um, put things in the ensemble stat directory. Um, it's just so that everything can stay nice and clean. And then it also gives you an opportunity to reference 
um, the input directory of the output directory. So if you need to take input from one tool, you can reference the output directory of the first tool that was called. So in this case, if you go through ensemble stat input directory is actually PB to NCP, PB to NC's output directory. That's a nice quick way to loop all of these tools together, to stitch them together um, in a nice way, instead of having to create separate directories for everything. You should try to reference directories as you go. So taking a quick look at what's in that wrap directory, we see that there's three different runs, um, the 2018, 07, 09, 12, 13, and 14, just like we discussed. We should have that zero lead time, which is your 12, uh, your for one hour lead time, which is your 13, and your two hour, which is your 14. Um, if we go on to see what's in that ensemble stat directory, we'll see that there's a whole list, a whole mess of um, outputs. And that's just what we requested in the ensemble stat output flags with the exception of this dot stat and uh, dot NC files. Um, to get a really good idea of the difference between, at least for, again, for the older version um, of ensemble stat, where you're gonna be using the forecast and ensemble entries in the configuration file, um, it can help to take a look at the NC view of one of these NetCDFs. So for this, I'm going to actually share my whole screen because otherwise you won't be able to see it. There we go. And what I want you to see is that, so in this, we have a whole mess of um, uh, variables we can select, um, the dew point, the temperature, U grid. This was all selected in the configuration file um, under the ensemble stat. Um, and you'll see things like um, ensemble frequency greater than or equal to 288, 293, 298. That's all set up by the categorical threshold. So in, if it's a GE, it's a greater than or equal to. Um, if it's a LE, it's a less than or equal to. Um, so just quickly jumping into the temperature, Z2. Um, this is the output that you get. Um, again, the difference being here that you're going to have um, you're going to have your uh, your ensemble frequency. You're you're really just trying to get a summary field of what the ensemble is doing, and that's kind of conveyed in the variable name. When you click on it, you'll see ensemble frequency for many of them, along with mean standard deviation and um, number that are valid. Again, these will start to go away after we get to 11, but for the time being, um, definitely you should be able to use these still. Um, the last thing I wanted to do is quickly close this. We'll bring this window up. And if we go back to our use case, we'll see that we wanted to take a look at the, one of the stat files. And the reason why I want to do this We'll jump over here. I'll use VI, but less will also work because um, I want to be able to do this. Set no wrap so we can see it very quickly. Um, I'm going to zoom in a little bit because my guess is you won't be able to see it otherwise. So as you can see in this one, um, if you were to scroll all the way down, you would see that we aren't seeing any other uh, variables besides the temperature at Z2 level. And that's because if you go through, again, that configuration file, the only thing we're requesting in the forecast field is this temperature at Z2. Um, but you are getting the various line types out. You're getting your SSVARs, you're getting your um, PHIST, your RHIST, um, which John G mentioned, the O rank. Um, all these uh, statistical calculations are being done, but they're done on the forecast field, not the ensemble field. Um, so that hopefully helps you understand the difference between the two. With the ensemble, you're just getting the ensemble relative frequency of things. You're just getting an overview uh, versus the forecast field. That's what you're requesting to do is very specific statistical output. They do not have to match. They do not have to be the same, but they certainly can be if that's what you're requesting. And to kind of help clear up some of this confusion, um, that's kind of why we prompted to move partway into Gen and prod um, and then partly into ensemble stats. So you won't have to uh, fight this kind of confusion if you have any uh, later on. Um, with the interest of time being 10 o'clock, um, are there any questions?
Looks like we're all good. Um, Tara, did you want to close? I know you had a note in the, the message list. Yeah, I just wanted to point out that we do not have a session next week. Um, our MET Plus team has been working very hard on getting this release out, and um, they all deserve a, a week off, especially being at spring break for many of our kids. Um, we will be demonstrating uh, setting up MIPLUS on operational output on the on Amazon Web Service on March 29th. And then the last four sessions in April will include looking at um, Met Viewer, Met Express, Met Cup Pi, Met Plot Pi, S2S Diagnostics, and Mode. So thank you. <laughs>